Hi, I'm Javis Lewis and in this episode I'm going to show you how to turn a rasterized image into a vector-based path in Photoshop. I did this because recently I looked into revitalizing one of my podcasts. I've got about seven podcast feeds now and one of them needed a funky logo. I mean, they all need funky logos really. And the one that I did revitalize was this one, the WordPress podcast, the Jay's WordPress podcast. And I thought it would be kind of fun to take the WordPress logo and extrude it in Blender. But of course, the WordPress logo isn't available as a curve. It's, it's only available as a PNG or a JPEG image for print and for the web I don't think it's available as a vector based image at least I didn't find one so I took it and converted it in Photoshop and I came across something kind of interesting there I, I had seen this option in Photoshop before that you just go to file export export as SVG and I thought that's the end of it but as soon as I import that resulting SVG into Blender nothing happens there's no curve there's no object there's no nothing I can't even do anything with it and of course that's because not all SVGs are created equal so we're gonna have a look at what that's all about that's what this video is about and then the next video and the one probably after that is how we create a logo like that so I created a corresponding YouTube thumbnail for that so that I have a bit more room here on the right hand side for the text and for my branding and then I did the same with my current web series which is of course Das Studio 101 that's the one I'm currently working on and uh, I did the same thing it's the same pattern there's a, I think I added a little map to the replicator here so that the replicator doesn't grow grass everywhere and I haven't quite implemented that into the YouTube thumbnail but I will in due course so perhaps this is a good opportunity to show you how that works so that's we're going to discuss all that in the upcoming video but right now now we're going to discuss how we can turn a rasterized logo into a path in Photoshop. So it turns out the thing that makes that possible is a file format called SVG and that's the scalable vector graphics format. It's an open format and both Photoshop as well as Blender support it so it's kind of a match made in heaven if you will. And um, this is a photo courtesy of Wikipedia that shows kind of illustrates kind of nicely what the difference between a raster and a vector image is. So the raster image only saves individual pixels with color information, whereas the vectorized image creates points and curves that connects the points. So almost like a 3D object just in the 2D world just on one plane. And the advantage of a vectorized image is that I can scale it up to as big or as small as I want to without losing any resolution. Whereas when I do that with a rasterized file, I blow that up and it gets pixelated or fuzzy or you know un unfocused and it looks terrible. So there has to be a way to convert that. And although there are several online tools available, I thought Photoshop has to have a way to do that. And it has, so let me show you how. Let's stick with the Das Studio logo as an example. So they don't have that as a download available. So I had to search the internet until I found a really old forum thread in which somebody had compiled several old Das logos here. This is what it looks like. And uh, if you open it in a new window, then it looks like this. So Das don't really use any of these anymore. But I thought I'm kind of interested in this one here, the Das Studio Pro 4.5 type logo. This is kind of a nice retro thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a screenshot with that on my Mac. And it doesn't have to be accurate. Just crop out whatever you know we need here, which is this. I don't really want to see the word Pro there, but I'm going to take it in anyway. I'll, we'll just, we'll just do, deal with that in the selection. So that's now just a simple PNG image. And if I open that with my current version of Photoshop CC, then it looks like this. So if I zoom in there, I can see that it is actually very fuzzy. It's not a very big image. It's not fantastic. But you know, this is great to uh, test out if, if my theory works and if I can you know, kind of remember how to do it. That's, that's kind of why I'm making these videos really. So let's uh, have a look at the layers palette here in which you can see because it's a PNG image, Photoshop makes this available as a proper layer called layer zero. If you do that with the JPEG image, then this is often locked and just says background, just double click on that and then it'll turn into a standard layer. And the key really to success here is that we need to create a selection. The selection can then turn into a path 
the path can then turn into a custom shape and the shape can then be saved as a vectorized SVG image. So it turns out, I didn't know this actually, that in, in the scalable vector graphics format is just a container. And the reason why I could create SVGs without path information is in fact that the specification allows for either pixel data and or curve and path data and or font data to be in the same file. So in that respect, it's a bit like a container, like a video container file that has a codec inside, but the container and the codec don't have to be the same, you know, so there's QuickTime, which contains a H.264 codec, for example, or contains an MPEG codec. That's how it works. So that's why you have one container kind of file format in which data resides. And that's how th many of these file formats work and the SVG is no exception. So that's why there are SVG files that don't contain any path data and Blender doesn't actually throw up an error message. It just goes, nothing in here that I can use and ignore the rest. And that's why nothing happens. So the secret to success here is in fact the magic wand tool up here also with the shortcut W, select it. And I'm going to click anywhere on this white bit here now. So that will create, that will select everything that's white and everything that's not white will not be selected. So um, selections, they are kind of the key to, to a lot of success in Photoshop. So there's another little uh, thing that we need to be aware of that's up here. That's the kind of selection mode. By default, it's this first little square. And what that does is if I just uh, hit command D to deselect everything. If I select something and then I select something else, for example, the middle of the O here, then that becomes a selection. Whereas when I then select this, then that becomes a selection, but I'm not adding to the selection. I'm just making a new selection every time. So what we really want to do is we want to make a selection and then add bits to the selection. And that's what that second little icon is for, the two filled out squares filled into each other. That's kind of add to the selection. So I can select my white bit here, that creates my first selection. And then I need to select the hole in the O here and that adds to my selection. See now this is filled out. And if I wanted to go ahead and do that here and here as well, then I could do that. And I'm not really interested in the word pro, so I'm going to remove that from the selection in a moment. But for now, this is this is kind of fine. Now, notice that currently we've selected all the white bits in the photo. And that's cool, but really we're interested in the word dash studio rather than the white bits. So we need to invert that to have the actual word as the selection. And to do that, we can head over to select inverse. That was easy, wasn't it? That wasn't too bad. But uh, now there's something else that I can see here. If we move in a little bit closer, you can see that there's kind of an orange glow around the letter. So about one pixel, I would say, maybe two. And my selection currently doesn't acknowledge that. So that there's, there's kind of a cutoff value where the selection kind of algorithm says, nah, I don't want to use that. But um, it depends on what you want to do. Sometimes you need to expand the selection by a pixel or two, or maybe by two or three pixels, also depending on how, how big this thing is. So I'm going to try and expand it a little bit. And we can do that uh, also via select modify. And then we have expand and contract. Those are, you know, to make the selection bigger and to make the selection a bit smaller. So this is kind of trial and error. We're going to expand this by maybe just one pixel and we'll see what it looks like. It's a little bit fatter and I think I like the look of that. So that was kind of step one there to make the selection. And uh, as I said, we worry about the word pro perhaps um, in a moment, or actually maybe we'll work, work, about, work about that now. Let's take the rectangular selection tool up here. And uh, we, again, we have these selection options here. Let's use the third icon, which means subtract from the selection. So to get rid of the word pro, all I need to do is basically draw a really crude kind of circle around it with my trackpad. And then whatever was selected underneath there will disappear. Now that was that. So how do we turn this selection into a path? Well, that's the kind of the second step in the process before we save it as an SVG. Uh, so we need to, with the selection active, we need to head over to our paths panel up here in the, in the palette. And with that selected, you can see I don't have any paths here. There's at the bottom 
uh, the fourth icon from the left is turn the current selection into a work path. This little icon that looks like you know four points connected with a circle on the middle there. And if we click that, then we can see what Photoshop is doing here. So it's kind of turning the selection, it's approximating the selection and does as best as it can to turn this into a path. Now this isn't perfect because our image wasn't very clear. So the more high resolution the image is that I want to convert, the better the results will be. So if I look at this now, the D isn't fantastic and the A, I mean, this should probably be a straight line. So you can go ahead and take the pen tool here and then either add more points, remove some points, straighten things out. I'm not going to do that here because, you know, this is kind of a fiddle work. And for our 3D thing, it's going to be it's going to be just fine. But you can see there's a lot of room for improvement here in that path. But with that path selected, we don't really need to do anything else. Just make sure it's, you know, it, it, it remains selected. Head over back to the layers and create a new layer on the bottom here. We could do that on the same layer. I just like to keep it, you know, kind of separate so that it's easy to follow the process along. And I'm going to switch off the bottom layer because we don't need that anymore. So right now we have nothing. We just have a path and basically a transparent layer there. And the tricky bit was the, the kind of the interesting bit that follows now is uh, kind of the, the key to success here to turn the path into something that Photoshop can save as an SVG. We need to turn this into what's called a custom shape. And Photoshop's custom shapes are basically things that are vectorized things that can be drawn out at any size. And we can also define them from a path. So let me show you how that works. With the path active, so you know, with it selected, if you just click off it, then the path is kind of um, not selected, but it's still there. So just click on the path sign like I had before. As soon as long as it's selected, we're fine. Over here under edit, we can define a custom shape. And that's kind of cool. We do that, and then this custom shape will be saved as a shape that we can now draw out. So we can call it a dash test perhaps here. And with that, it's kind of not gone. It's kind of still there somewhere. Uh, with that, we can now click off the path. We don't have to do it, but it's kind of nice to clear the screen here. Go back to the layers panel, select the empty layer that we have here. And now head over and select that little custom shape icon here. Custom shape tool is also available with the letter U. If you don't see that, if you see something like the rectangular or the ellipse tool or the line tool, just hold on this for a little bit longer and then this context menu pops up and then just select custom shape tool on the bottom. And with that, another menu bar appears at the top here. And on the right, you can select what the shape is that you want to draw out. So there's kind of a lot of pre-built ones here, arrows and frames and copyright symbols and all that. And of course, my WordPress symbols that I've used here. And the last one in the list is the one that we've just created, which is the DAS Studio one. So select it. And then with it selected, draw it out. So left click and drag onto the canvas and you can see that's where it appears. Now it isn't locked proportionately to do that. Hold the shift key down and then draw it out as big or as small as you want. So in my case, I might want to do that so that I have DAS and Studio separate. In fact, I could probably define separate shapes for that. But for now, I'm just going to draw this out. You can hit the space bar to position it and then you know keep drawing that out or let go of the shift key and then you can skew it vertically or horizontally. So I'm just going to do it so that it fills my picture here and that's that let go and then Photoshop will fill it in with rasterized stuff so you can also draw that out on a much larger canvas now and um, you know then the resolution will be a little bit better so we can see still see this fuzzy stuff here that doesn't need to happen if I just go and uh, put that if I just go and you know undo this and I'm going to go over to image and say uh, canvas size and make that from 377 to 138 pixels. Maybe I make that uh, something like, I don't know, 2000 by 2000 pixels, you know, really, really nice and large. So let me zoom out there and then drag out that logo. See what happens now. Uh, again, position this, it's probably square isn't the best idea, but yeah, you get the point. If I now zoom in, then I don't really have much pixelation on the outsides anymore. And that's because Photoshop is now using the path information to draw that.
Now this looks gray with a dark stroke because that's currently what's defined up here. So it really isn't important how it looks because that's not the information we're gonna save in a moment. So right now, this is what that looks. And in order to save this now as an SVG, all we need to do is uh, make sure only this layer is showing. And also look at this, uh, it's not just a shape, this is in fact a smart layer that you can see at this little square icon on the bottom of the layer thumbnail. Now we head over to either just uh, right click on that layer, not so much on the thumbnail, but on this uh, where the writing is here, right click on that and then say quick export, no sorry, export as, or this is the same dialog that you get up here as well if you go for file, export, export as. And if you choose that, then Photoshop thinks about it for a second. And on the top right here, you can, uh, you can select what you want to save it as. Select SVG, the scalable vector graphics format. And the image size and canvas information isn't really important here because we're really only interested in the path information. And that doesn't really matter which resolution that is saved or what the, what the image resolution is. Hit export all. And perhaps I'm gonna put it on the desktop and call it uh, das test.svg. Export, case closed. That is how you do that. Now let's see if we can actually turn this into a 3D object in Blender just briefly to see if that path information is actually worth a dime or two. So let's launch Blender here, remove the default cube and import our file. So import scalable vector graphics, navigate to my desktop and double click that little icon. and. It's far away in the distance here. I can't quite see it because it's so small, but I can see that I do have a curve object here. And if I hit the dot icon, then there it is. So that is exactly the path information that Photoshop has exported and turned a rasterized image into this so that I can now import it into Blender. That's kind of cool, isn't it? So then in order to do something useful with it, either I can treat it as a curve or I can head over to Object, Convert to Mesh from Curve Meta Surf Text. I wonder what Surf is. It's not the Surf on the beach, is it? No, no. So if we do that, then we don't really see a difference in the viewport. But if we head over here, then my Curve thing is now no longer a curve. It's got a little different icon here, which is the 3D object icon. And with that, I can now go into edit mode and then I can go and um, select everything, perhaps extrude everything. And now this thing is in fact a 3D object. It's a bit tough to see with the, you know, with the color that it has, but um, that is easy to fix. Just make that a little bit lighter and there we go. So that's how we can extrude that in Blender. And that's how we can turn a rasterized image into a 3D object essentially. Now, while we're talking about this, because extrusion is, is essentially what I want to do with it at the end of the day, Photoshop can also do that from a path. Did you know that? This is, it looks kind of funky. If you go back to the path, then you can right click on that path and say, make 3D extrusion from selected path. That is kind of cool. I mean, this is, you know, this is where Adobe really shines sometimes that you think, whoa, it can do that. So uh, I just wanted to show you this. This is not something what that video is actually about, but it is kind of cool to see. Do you know what? This is available in Photoshop right away and you can play with it and you can use this as a layer in your 2D images and kind of copy that in, kind of, you know, make that blend in if you wish. So it's just another one of those things, another little piece of gadgety software trickery that you can play with. In the next video, we're going to have a look at how we can grow some grass on a plane and use this extrusion to grow some other stuff on it and, you know, create the logo that I've shown you in the beginning. That was it really. That is how you turn a rasterized image into an SVG file with path information in Photoshop. If you like this video, of course, please share it with friends, family and total strangers. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if you feel generous, you can always drop me a buck or two on Patreon. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Take care. Bye bye.